All right, Jake, welcome back. It's been a little while. It's been a long time. A very Jake, long while. where have you been? I don't know. I've been busy. Yeah. I haven't. I, uh, we've been doing the rankings. It's still all happening in the background, but um, we've not been in front of a camera for quite a while. No, yeah, we've been a bit lazy this year. Not lazy. We've been actually very busy with business work, um, general life stuff. But when it comes to TBO rankings, yeah, like, like Jake just mentioned, we've only really been updating the rankings, and that's been Jake. And we've been very, very quiet on social media, on podcasts. Um, apart from maybe the last two weeks, I started ramping things up again. Um, more on that perhaps towards the end of the show, but we will be looking at doing some stuff in the NPL off-season or A-League season, um, fantasy, A-League, all that sort of stuff. But this show, Jake, this is all about NPL season and review type of um, show. We're going to be running through basically how it stands right now as of Monday the 16th of September. Now, of course, there are a few finals to be played. There's an NPL championship. There's an FFA Cup. So there will be some movement to, to come, but we didn't want to wait a whole another month or so. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just wanted to basically get get going now because there was a bunch of uh, grand finals on the weekend. Almost um, all of them. Which is almost all which of them. is why we've picked this this timing. Um, yeah. so all of the state MPL leagues are now wrapped up. Yep. So we're basically going to talk about uh, some of the biggest movers up the rankings, some of the biggest movers down. Um, and then just we'll cover each state perhaps quickly, um, see how they sort of fell. Uh, we've got some some Instagram follower questions that were sent in. Um, and that's about it. Jake's got some other stats, but otherwise stats of interest. I like to call them. That's literally what it says here on my notes, so some stats of interest. Otherwise, Jake, let's get started with the top 25. Um, Now, guys at home, hopefully we'll get some images up for you uh, on the YouTube and maybe Facebook video. Uh, The podcast listeners, of course, can go to tbrankings.com to view these images. Now, Jake. And we should also say that, um, this, as you mentioned, this is as of right now. Things will keep moving, um, and if you want to see the updated list or see the full rankings beyond this, because we're not going to go into too much detail beyond the top 25 today, uh, go to the website, tprankings.com, yeah. and that'll have the full list of 372 clubs. That was 52. 72. Okay, there you go. 372. Um, and we might be expanding in the off-season as well with a well, few leagues. Well, we've had a few requests, so that there's a, there's a very good chance that will happen. Okay, Um, let's kick it off, Jake. Um, Interestingly, for the first time maybe a couple of weeks ago, the top 10 clubs in the rankings are all A-League clubs. I think Central Coast spent the entire uh, A-League season ranked lower than at least one or two NPL clubs. Um, They got down to about 15th or 16th at one point. Yeah, yep, they were. And, I mean, if you look at it, the the top five NPL clubs are all quite closely ranked um, and it's changed throughout the season. So I think Central Coast have, over the last um, month as of, started playing a couple of FFA Cup games and as the A-League clubs play other non-A-League um, clubs, um, any results that go the A-League clubs way impact all of them. Um, so, yeah, Central Coast have kind of picked up some TPO points and, and jumped up. And at the same time, to be honest, well, I mean, we can get right into it. The top-ranked MPL club in the country right now is Avondale FC from Victoria. The second highest is Heidelberg United, also from Victoria. So, um the fact that you have such two such strong clubs from the same state, they're sharing some of the, the TPO points in a way. Okay. Um, whereas you, when we get into it in a minute, you'll see in some of the other states where you have one very dominant side, they shoot much further than the rest um, and, and maybe go higher than they otherwise What's should. What's an be, example so. of that? The um, Arpia in 13th? Well, probably not. Uh, so up here in 13th, but there's quite a few New South Wales clubs in the top 25. Queensland, to some degree, has been an example of this. Lions FC is ranked 14th. Um, the next highest Queensland club is outside the top 25, mm. um, and there's a few of them all clumped together in about 27, 8, 28, uh, and 29, something like that. So, But um, in the past, we've had teams like South Hobart dominant in Tasmania, whereas the rest of them are quite a, a, a way behind. Um New South, uh, Northern New South Wales with Edgeworth Eagles in the past, although, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of guessing a little bit, but um, just the fact that Avondale and Heidelberg are both ranked so highly, if one of those was a lot more dominant than the other, then you'd see them probably ranked higher. Um, and we should, maybe now, Cody, I'm jumping around a bit, but given we're talking about A-League and top 25, we should mention Western United mm. to be added to the rankings. Yep, yep. Um, Pretty much from now, we're going to we're gonna add them in the next week uh, and they're going to come in at 11th, equal to Central Coast Mariners or equal 10th. Um, and that's that's kind of how we add new teams as they enter the rankings. Uh, they come in at the – or equal to the lowest ranked team in the league that they're going into. So they will come in at 11th, which will shift every other club down one. My prediction is they'll um, probably end up, I reckon, lower 
than 11th in, in this time next year. Well, uh, Central Coast Mariners are only a few TPO points ahead of Avondale, so if either them or Western United come in and lose the first couple of games, you'll see them fall below some of those NPL clubs. Let's just run through it quickly then. So we sort of touch on it here. We won't touch A-League clubs because that's um, neither here nor there. But Avondale 11th, as Jake mentioned. Heidelberg 12th. Arpia 13th. Lions in at 14th. Campbelltown City from South Australia um, 15th. Oakley Cannons having a great um, second half of the year to finish in 16th. Bentley, the champions on the weekend, 17th. Sydney United 18th. Wollongong 19th with a great year. Marconi 20th, Olymp- Sydney Olympic 21st, Edgeworth Eagles 22nd, Hume 23rd, Adelaide Comets 24th, and Blacktown City round out the top 25. And uh, on the image as well, just to mention, we've got the highest ranked clubs in the other states, which we kind of didn't mention there. So Perth Soccer Club from WA ranked in at 32nd, uh, Devonport City Strikers from Tasmania, the highest ranked Tasmanian club at 52nd, Canberra Olympic, the highest ranked uh, club from ACT, 67th, and it, from Northern Territory, Hellenic, all the way down in 201st, and that won't be the first time we talk about Hellenic tonight. Okay, there you go. All right, we're moving on to the biggest movers down the TBA rankings in 2019 as of today. Um, we'll just quickly touch on this, Jake, but let's, I don't know how you want to do this, just touch on, uh, well, maybe we'll just run down the list quickly. So the, yep. the team that has moved the most down the rankings the, the entire year uh, is Danella White Eagles from Western Australia's State League Division One. Um, they've fallen 144 spots in the rankings. That's a lot. That's a long way. Um, you got to ask what like what happened there. You know, they must have just had a whole uh, the entire team and coach and stuff must have just left and given Well, up. I mean, I, I don't know the story behind most of these, but a couple that we can touch on um, as we run down the list. So Bulai from. The Illawarra Premier League, we were talking about them this time last year as having one of the biggest moves up, I think. Mm. They were mm. absolutely dominant in the um, their league there. Illawarra Premier um, League, yeah. And this year they, I, I mean, as I say, I don't know what the changes they had personnel-wise, but um, they struggled in the entire year. I think they missed the finals and uh, I don't think they, they didn't get relegated, but they were in the bottom half of the table. Yep. Um, Hellenic, I said we'd mention them again. Last year and the year before, Hellenic was the strongest club in Northern Territory by quite a way. Um, and they finished outside the, I mean, that's only, I think, six or seven clubs in the North, North Zone Northern Territory League, um, it's called. And they missed the top four for finals. So they've had a shocker. Um, so they fell 104 spots. Western Pride from Queensland's MPL is next up. And that one, we do know a little bit that they lost a number of players, including partway or towards the end of last year's, the 2018 season, they lost... Um, Wenzel Hall. Wenzel Halls to Brisbane Raw. Um, but I know that they lost a couple of other players as well and had quite a young side. So they've just been relegated from the Queensland mm. MPL. You want to keep running Although, through although there, Queensland sort of jump around in the off-season, you never know what, who's really going yeah, to be but, relegated. Well, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Yeah. Um, I don't want to spend too much on it, but the list is up on your screens. Um, some other – fair few Queensland clubs, South United, North Pine, Pine Hills. I've got Parramatta FC from New South Wales, MPL 3. Uh, Morton Bay United from the MPL Queensland, you know, going back a few years. Morton Bay and um, Western Pride, you know, in grand finals, I'm pretty sure, and, and premiers, all that sort of stuff, doing well in the FFA Cup now on, they're on this list. Uh, Subiaco from WA, Adelaide City is a is in at about I don't know fifteenth or sixteenth. Just there. missed uh, relegation. They yeah, were one one position that. above that. They um, did start a few points. Yeah, they were negative deficit. six point six. Yeah, from some sort of salary cap issue. Um, Hakoa, yep, Hakoa City and Pascavale City. in at twentieth there. Yep. So, um, all right, let's move on to the biggest moves up. Let's uh, turn our focus to the... the positive stuff. Number one, Gold Coast Knights, and what a season they have had. I mean, they're a completely different team to last year. I think they had a few players left over um, from the... They were in the Gold Coast Premier League. Now they've come into the... Straight into the top league in the Queensland NPL. They've got Mitch Nichols, Matt Smith, ex-Raw players. Um, I think Shannon... Shannon Brady's Brady. And we went and watched the grand final last night. They beat Olympic 2-1, and they're a great team. Um, They've got some... Uh, plays up front and stuff who I think have played down, like Sam Smith um, and oh, what's his, I forget the other guy's name, but they've been, been around down in Victoria and stuff as well. Uh, so they're, they're a really good team and they've moved up a whopping 157 spots. So they basically started with their old score from the Gold Coast Premier yeah, so League. Last, we should clarify, yeah, I guess make that clear. Last year they were in the Gold Coast Premier League um, and then this year they've been, it wasn't a promotion, but they were added 
to the yeah. Queensland MPL, yep. and they've come in and finished second on the ladder, um, only a point or two behind the four the points. premiers, four points, uh, and then they've won the grand final. And and done. I mean, they didn't make the round of thirty two for the FA Cup, but I think they knocked off a, a decent side or two there. So they've picked up quite a lot of points. Yeah, great and, team. And they and finished in twenty ninth in the country. Presumably, they'll if they keep their players. I wouldn't be surprised if they are a top fifteen team uh, this time next year. If they year. have a season like they've done this year again, they'll be in the yeah in the top twenty five clubs in the country for sure. Uh, we got Stanmore Hawks, Jake. You got you got their jersey at home. I do. I didn't even think to uh, see. I, I was I'd already come to work. Mm. I'd, I'd left home before I did this list. Otherwise, I might have had to. Because we are we're recording now. this at um, Jake's business at work here after work. <laughs> um, Burley heads from Queensland in third. We got Burundara. Burundara, Burundara carry Eagles. Yep, from Victoria. Um, AC Karina, um, Russ, who works with us here, he he plays for AC Karina. So number five, got a few friends down there. We got their jersey as well, not on, but. Um, and then Kumra from um, Gold Coast as well. A few Gold Coast te- surfaces further There's a number of Gold Coast teams there. who have moved up um, because of the FFA Cup, basically. So in the, the qualifying, Queensland qualifying for FFA Cup changed a little bit this year. Um, there was more interleague games between clubs from Gold Coast, Brisbane, Sunny Coast, Toowoomba, those sort of things. Yep. Um, and the Gold Coast clubs killed it. Mm. Um, so they did really well so in the FFA Cup, didn't they? They did. So that, that kind of... Um, Raised Explains a up. lot of those clubs, yep. Um, Nambu Yandina, they're from the Sunny Coast Premier League. They won the grand final this year. They um, have been pretty average the last few years. I so used to play up there um, last yep. year. Nunawading as well, Cody, you skipped over there. They yep. were one of the clubs that have been pretty shocking, <laughs> pretty very average for the past few seasons and were relegated last year. This year they've come in and um, they've obviously found their level at least for, for a season and done really well. Yep, and uh, yeah, anyway, the the list there is on your screen. Um, any other teams there worth mentioning, Jake? Gungalin United had a great year in Dan ACT, Harlan, yep. which which finished with a 5-0 win in the grand, grand yeah. final. Did. All right, um, now we're going to move on to state by state. I suppose we don't want to spend too long on each one, but um, how you want to do this, Jake, just run through them. I'll tell you what, you pick one, we'll bring it up. And, okay, uh, let's go. Well, Tasmania, let's start there because they're not quite finished, are they? Well, they've the league has finished. League's finished. Um, they've got some weird system yeah, going on. Yeah, their finals, finals is they? a bit different, and I can't even find any details on it. So okay. if you're watching and you know about the details of the finals down there, let us know because I think it's they take some of the MPL clubs and then some of the – Division two clubs mm. and put them all in. Anyway, let's just focus on the table. Um, Devonport City were the premiers there. Uh, they nine points. They clear. were they were clear for quite a, uh, a lot of the highest ranked there. team from Tasmania in fifty second. Yep. Um, Olympia Warriors second, South Hobart third, and Hobart Zebras fourth. Um, and Clarence United down on the bottom. Um, We'll touch on them in a bit, I think you said. We'll touch on them in a minute uh, in terms of their goal difference and and some numbers there. Uh, Let's just go straight into ACT, so we'll bring their stats up. Um, So as we mentioned, is it Gungalin? Gungalin, yeah, I think. They they beat uh, Kuma FC 5-0 in the grand final. They they did finish, they finished third on the table though, so they were a fair way behind, uh, well, four points behind Kuma and then Canberra Olympic actually finished top and they are the top ranked team in in the ACT. Um, Another five points ahead of Kuma, so... I guess they are the best team at the moment, but they uh, – how did they go down? I think I smashed 5-2 in the elimination final. Oh, no, that's Canberra FC. Sorry, they, they lost twice in a row. So they lost they to Kuma and Gungalin um, in, the, in the semis and the um, their second prelims. Chance, yep. um, other than that, not much um, worth mentioning, is maybe it? Maybe that uh, Riverina Rhinos finished last and are relegated. So ACT Ooh. for the first time oh, have yeah. brought in promotion relegation. I haven't actually – it's probably – a question that I should have who's had coming ready up. is who's coming up. Yeah. I'm not sure. No, um, but yeah, Riverina Rhinos relegated. They only got the one win and one draw for the whole season. See you later. I like promotion <laughs> relegation. That's good. Get a fresh Who club doesn't? in there. Ambi- ambitious club uh, next year. Uh, let's go to Northern New South Wales, Jake, where the grand final Edgeworth Eagles uh, beat Maitland. Uh, was it? 2-0, I think it was 2-0. 2-0, yeah. yep. Um, and, yeah, Maitland finished premiers, um, but weren't to be crowned champions. Um, who's the highest ranked there, Jake? Looks like Edgeworth. Uh, Edgeworth are, is yeah, in 22nd. Um, there's a number of clubs in the 30s and 40s, um, and, Ma- and Maitland, after a great season, are up to 47th. I think last year it was very close. Like, there was always Lambton, Edgeworth, and Broadmeadow were, yep. they're always hanging around each other, but it looks like Edgeworth have gone on a bit of a better run um, this year. The last twelve months, and they're yep. fair way clear now. I think uh, it looks like Broadmeadow are uh, second place 
uh, team in Northern New South Wales back in 37th, so quite a fair way ahead. Um, Adamstown, they're not, they're not, there's no relegation in this league, are no, there? Because they finished was, last. Um, but they've, yeah, they've canned it. Okay. And Charlestown finished six. They had a really good season last year, although it looks pretty close. Like you look at from second, Lambton are in 38 points, down to six, 36 points. So two. Yeah. Two points um, separate four or five teams. So um, Western workers were winning that league for quite a while as well in mm. the early stages. They'll be disappointed not to even make the finals. I had a lot of requests yeah. come from that area to add the zonal league. The so zone, pr- zone Premier League, zone league two, three. I reckon there was a bunch of people got in cahoots and said message to Pierre. All, same, all yeah. of a sudden, we put a request out there about, I don't know, six different people said this, the same league and I said something well, going we, on here. We, but you know what? It might have worked. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking about adding it. Okay, Western Australia, Jake. Uh, Perth Soccer Club. Uh, won the grand final over Inglewood United 2-1. You Done. watched that on the live stream, didn't you? I watched uh, quite Part a lot of it, of it yep. Yeah. Um, so they – I mean, they won the league by 11 points. Inglewood had a pretty good year as well, um, but Perth has done the double. And to be honest, there's not a lot of clubs this year around the country at the MPL level who were both premiers and champions. So mm. Perth is the first that we've touched on so far. And they play, I think, Heidelberg in the um, – Yeah, that's champion, right. The in, MPL um, Championship. Sunday, I believe. That'd be a good. This game. Sunday coming. You see, they second. um they I, th- I believe it was eighteens, twenties, and pre- Perth won all three grades. Yeah, at, on the, at the same ground on the same day. That? That'd be and great we, as a Perth, Perth say supporter. As well, um, in the major semi final only a week or two weeks ago, Inglewood beat Perth three one. Yeah, the grand see final that? and yeah. host it. So, so Perth are ranked thirty second. If they can beat Heidelberg, that you expect them to move. Um, they're not expected to win. So I don't know. I have a feeling it might be in Melbourne though. Not sure. I think you might be right. Yep. Don't quote us on that, folks. Anyway. Let's move on to the next one, South Australia, where Campbelltown, um, there you go, Jake, back premiers and yep, champions. Another There's one another there. one. And they play, we're going to go watch them play Lions. Yes, um, which is a repeat of the 2018 MPL final. Final, yeah. Which Campbelltown won 1-0, 2-1. 2-1, I believe. That was yeah. down in South Australia. So this one's Big good game. Um, one o'clock kickoff, which is well, weird in Queensland. That's we we like, kind of mentioned pretty, it before, um, and um, it's worth coming back to briefly. But Lions ranked 14th in the country right mm. now. Campbelltown ranked 15th, and yep. they're they're very very close. So this is probably the closest matchup okay. of the MPL final series. Mm. Now I'm looking forward to it. it. Should be a great game. Yeah, we're hoping to get along to it. Um, but yeah, Campbelltown. If we're touch, staying on South Australia, won the grand final over Adelaide Comets three nil. They finished five points ahead of Comets in the in the league. Um, so yeah, they just had a great year. And as we mentioned earlier, Jake Adelaide City only two points away from relegation. And the teams that did go down: West Adelaide and South Adelaide Panthers. I don't know. Again, I didn't check who came up. Did you? I I didn't. But I know that West Adelaide. That's the first time they've been relegated. Um, oh wow. In the MPL format, yep, I guess, and and it was only a couple of years ago they were up near the top of the league. So yeah, and I mean it is close again. Like Adelaide Comets finished on thirty eight points in second. Metro Stars um, in six finished on thirty four. Actually, Croydon Kings seven thirty three. So um, it was pretty close between second and seventh. But Metro Stars down in six. They, I mean, in in previous couple of years, have mm. always been up near the top. So uh, I guess a couple of wins here. If they just won two more games, they would have finished second. But um, yeah, anything else? I, I always touch on this when we talk about South Australia's, but how can they still only have the one <laughs> FFA Cup spot? I mean, this year they got two because Campbelltown won that, yep. F, uh, the champion. MPL. MPL finals. champions. But I can't believe they've got um, two, one spot and then we, we send Mackay bloody magpies into the FFA Cup for Queensland and they're getting <laughs> flogged 11-0 in the last yeah. round. Like, it's just – it's ridiculous. I, I can't believe – I mean, honestly, still a, still a Queensland spot. We don't deserve four. I don't disagree with that, at least in the format of the qualification when yeah. you've got the Northern Queensland club qualifying automatically without having to be challenged against the better yeah. um, sides down south. All right, let's finish off with perhaps the three most popular leagues, at least for TBA rankings. Our followers seem to be in these three states. Let's start with New South Wales. Um, and Apia won that final again over United, Sydney United 2-1. Apia finished second on the table, um, nine points behind Wollongong. What a, what a great season Wollongong they had. They did, yeah. I think, he's, I think it's James. I always, I think that's his surname, Thomas James, or something like that. He was a, a I think there. he was a player, players player, whatever that gold medal sort of um, 
Player of the Season award, yep. and their coach Wilshire won uh, Coach of the Year as well. So I don't. I, I think they got. A, I think that actually what happened to Bulli. Apparently they got a few of those players. Oh really? Because it's the same area, yeah. Lawara. I, I believe some of those players went to Wollongong. I don't know uh-huh. how many. I don't know if it was the key players or stuff. But it seems that narrative seems to play true. Uh, but yeah, Wollongong had a great season. Um, they moved up. Uh, I don't know how much, how far they went up the whole entire year, um, but they finished on 19th in the rankings um, and Apia finished 13th. It's a strong league there, like Blacktown 25th, Sydney United 18th, Marconi 20th, Olympic 21st. Well, there you go, Olympic as the 21st um, best club in the yep. country right now. Didn't even make the finals. Crazy. So very strong league. Yeah. Um, and Mount Druitt survived. They came out last year, as did... Yep. No, they only have one spot. Yeah. Is it North Shore Mariners go up? Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's yeah. exciting. I don't know much about them, so... No, other than they had a, a very good year. They were in... Um, they weren't in our top 10 movers up, but they were. Yep. They had a really... Um, a big they, year, I guess. They lost the grand final to someone. I forget who. Someone Hills or something. Anyway, they Hills, lost the Hills grand United. final. Hills United. Hills yeah. Brumbies, they used to be called, I think. Oh, Hills okay. Right. Yep. And Hakoa. See you later. Such history. Well, they were only in the, the top league there for a couple of years, weren't they? I think they got promotion oh, really? two years ago. Yeah, right. Um, and avoided it last year. Um, Apia, on their way to the grand final victory as well, they had to beat Blacktown City on penalties in one of the earlier rounds. Um, and then they beat Wolves... Um, and in that major semi-final game, and um, Wolves went on to lose their second chance against Sydney United. Mm. All right, let's go to Victoria, where last night Bentley Greens got up over Avondale on penalties. Jake called this yesterday, um, so well done, Jake. Um, and they just had a terrible second half of the year, didn't they? But they just came good. I think they lost like on their way to finals before the finals, four out of their last five games or something. Okay. I don't, don't quote me on that, but it was something they just had. They were terrible towards the end of the year, but they ended up fifth, um, and then they just had a great final season uh, series. So they beat uh, who they beat Jake. They beat Green Gully one nil. Then they went on to beat Heidelberg, and then they beat Avondale. So they just know they how had to win a the final. they had another change of coach as well. So mm. um, John Anastasi Status. Yeah. I can't even say his last name. It's gone sorry. to Western um, but he, So he left. Earlier on in the season, um, yeah. I know that this was their third coach, and somebody oh, out okay. there will know better than me. That. So yeah. it was only going into the final series that they changed coach again, um, and then this coach obviously, I mean, he's come in and won a grand final, mm. probably against the odds, or or at least um, mm. from a underdog situation. Um, yeah. And I guess that's kind of setting them up for next year. But Avondale will be disappointed. That's a couple of years in a row, yeah. two very good seasons, and um, to finish without a trophy. Um, will probably be disappointing for them. And finishing two points behind Heidelberg on the ladder. But that's, I mean, it just adds fire, doesn't it? They look like a really ambitious club. Um, they got their pod, well, the Avengers radio going each week, which mm. I started listening to. Like, they, they got ambitions, and, and this sort of stuff always just makes it that much sweeter next year, and it gives you something to aim towards. Um, so, yeah, I reckon that. And, and as we mentioned, they're the highest ranked NPL club right now. Yeah. Um, that might change. Heidelberg, as we said, yeah, only to just. play Perth um, on the. This weekend in the NPL mm. final, so Hotterberg could overtake them. But as it stands right now, Avondale are the best NPL club in the country. Yeah, um, rounding out the top six there, um, Oakley third, had a good year. Green Gully fourth, Bentley fifth, and Hume sixth. Denong City came good towards the end, but they didn't quite make finals. They were seventh. Kingston City and Pascavale are Gornskis. And who's Dandenong coming Thunder up? Thunder um, had to play. Uh, that's right. They played Bullen Lions yeah, and me. beat them 1-0 to survive yeah. for another year in the NPL. And we do know who came up. It's on... It's uh, St. Albans. Yep. And I know this. Don't I? <laughs> oh, I We're so underprepared. Oh, I, I just know. <laughs> it's just been a long day and it's Monday. But I, keep, keep talking. I'm yeah, going to right. yeah, I right. feel like we should, and, we should know that. And the last, uh, Queensland NPL. So I'm going to start on Queensland while Jake looks up um, the Victorian bloody... Who is it, Jake? Uh, Eastern Lions. That's right, Eastern Lions, yep. Okay, Queensland, uh, Gold Coast Knights won the grand final. We were just talking about them earlier, so uh, we won't touch on that again. But, yeah, apart from what a great year they've had, they finished second behind Lions, uh, who we mentioned. Two years in a row? Yeah, yeah, Lions. Lions um, only been in the NPL two years, and they've finished top both years. The thing I love about Queensland is the top four. It's so good it's because brutal, out of 15 it, yeah. teams, only four make the finals, which is – it just means – But then on top of that, it's – which is – I mean, very prestigious, I guess, and difficult to get into the the top four. Well, you got but, strikers missing out, and what a great team they are! Yeah, well, I mean, they've, their forms towards the end of become, the year, anyway. Yeah, they're definitely in form, especially in the FFA Cup run. But it's not only a top four out of fifteen, which is difficult, but then it's 
one v four, two v three, no second chances. Yeah, that's, like, as it should be. I, I hate I mean, this stuff just, where one plays two and then you get a second. Because then often, like in Perth and Inglewood, Inglewood beat Perth just two weeks ago, and then they come back for the grand final. It just takes a bit of sting out of the game, I think. Um, playing the same team two weeks later. Mm. I don't know. It, it happens a lot. So, um, anyway, Peninsula got off to a rocket start. They ended in third, so not a ba- and only one point behind which Gold is Coast. A, which is a really great first season in the NPL. NPL. But if they, I mean, if you ask them honestly, they'll be disappointed. They were yeah. something like eleven points clear at one stage. Yeah, yeah, they just like went they, on they a were a run shoe in to, to win the premiership. Um, um, and then actually, the game I think I co-commentated. They lost. At home to Lions, Lions, and then yeah. that run sort of started where they started losing a few games. <laughs> Olympic uh, were how many points behind? Bloody hell, 12 points behind Peninsula. So it was really a top three, and then Olympic, um, but then there was another sort of 11 points back to strikers. So really um, strong top half of the well, table. The, the there. top four has been locked in for probably half the season. Yeah. Yeah, and then the teams, as we mentioned before, Western Pride, I can't believe they've gone down. Uh, Magpies survived by one point, although I heard rumors they might. I don't know. They they they've been posting on social media that they're looking forward to next year, all that sort of stuff. But I heard rumours that they might not be around at all. Um, don't know. Um, well, so Western Pride, Southwest Queensland Thunder, who are from Toowoomba, they're gone, and Sunny Coast Fire. Fingers crossed, they're gone for good. <laughs> down to the for good. We should we should clarify for good as in down to the second FQPL. Not, yeah. Well, they just they survived down. last year, and it's just a joke. Like we'll talk about later the amount well, of goals they conceded. Yeah, they they've won two games, one draw, and lost twenty five games this it's, year. It's a Mickey Mouse and round. That's a very similar um, output from their last two seasons as well. Yeah, it just diminishes the league though, doesn't it? Like Lions going traveling up to the Sunny Coast to play Sunny Coast Fire when it's like honestly, like there was a few close games and stuff, but. You go there just playing your reserve team and it's just a waste of a, yep. of a weekend. You'd rather just have it off, have a buy, or just get rid of them. But anyway, the teams that come up, uh, so one one Sunny Coast club are gone and the new team, Wanderers, are back, uh, yep. in. They, got, they won promotion, uh, Wanderers, yep. as did... Uh, Capalaba Bulldogs. Oh, that's right. I can't believe that. Nobody would have predicted that no. at the start of the year. No. So that should be good. That should be a good season. Now, that's all the states there, Jake, isn't it? We touched on each one. We did. Um, something that I probably didn't tell you... We, we could have okay. done Cody, which, Let's go. look, I'm not really prepared for it, if I'm honest, but we'll we'll bring it up anyway. And that's a bit of a state comparison between all okay. the states. Because okay. um, the question always comes up, which is the strongest state? And I think our answer pretty much every time, and it's not going to be too different now, is New South, New South Wales and Victoria. Victoria basically, well, they are the two strongest and they're, they're neck and neck. Um, in the last month, couple of months, it started to shift, and we'll get the image up on the screen, Victoria is starting to pull ahead a little bit. Not mm-hmm. by a lot, but if you look at where they're strong, on average, their strongest clubs um, and on average where their weakest clubs in the league. So if you look at it as a whole league, yep. they're slightly ahead of where the New South Wales clubs are sitting. And okay. that's um, a combination of F- FFA Cup run uh, games over the um, last couple of years and um, I guess MPL finals results, that sort of thing. So look, there's there's not enough in it to say Victoria is the strongest state in my opinion, but it's... Very, very close, uh, and Victoria seems to be pulling in that direction, so we'll see how okay. we go. Keep an eye on that. And as you mentioned before, South Australia, hard done to only have one um, pos- spot in the FFA Cup because they're the, the next highest um, ranked st- or best state, um, MPL. And then going down, you've got Queensland, Northern New South Wales, Western Australia, Tasmania, ACT. Um, and you can see, I-, I thought this is interesting, Cody, to bring up, is if you look at Queensland, um, Tasmania, and I guess to some degree, Northern New South Wales, they're the three states, and even ACT because they haven't had promotion relegation until literally this year. Yep. They're the, the ones, if you look at the size of the bar there for their MPL, that are quite large. So you've got, you know, you look at the, the where their top sides are and it might makes a bit of sense, but then you look at how far down some of their lower rank sides. Like we just touched on even Queensland, Sunny Coast, uh, Fire, and yep. how low they are in the rankings. And it, what it does is it diminishes the overall quality of the league a little bit. Um, so promotion relegation helps to keep those leagues really yep. performing or, you know, a, a challenge, I guess. Yep. So the top clubs are always in the top league, and that's how it should be, in my opinion. Cool. All right, Jake. Um, you got some other stats. You, is that the other stats you mentioned, or you got no, one or two no, other things? No, I am full of stats. I'm going to run through these really quickly. I just thought these ones were of interest to me, so maybe they are to somebody else. Um, number of games played is an interesting one. Um, it, so just kind of looking at who's and, and again, there's some games still to come. MPL final series, FFA Cup, whatever. Olympic FC in uh, Queensland has played 36 games, and that's the most out of uh, the MPL clubs this year. 
followed by Hume from Victoria. Brisbane Strikers. We've got a game tomorrow. Yep. Um, Brisbane Strikers, Gold Coast Knights. Also got a game. Uh, in th- at 34. New South Wales, Sydney United is coming in next at 33 games. Melbourne Knights, 33. Bentley Greens, Peninsula Power, Oakley Cannons have all played 32 games each. So Queensland, Victoria seem to have played the most, and that's probably because they have more clubs in their leagues and they're not FFA Cup runs and the like. Um, two clubs have scored, two MPL clubs have scored over 100 goals this year. Um, and I was going to ask you, but you're looking at it, so I'll just let everybody know. Olympic FC have scored 121 goals across... FFA Cup and the MPL, and Brisbane Strikers have scored 104 goals, so not bad. Which they're good, good attacking teams, but again, it goes back to show how some of the, the weaker teams play into that. Well, I might skip ahead because what I've also got here is how many clubs have conceded 100 goals oh, or yeah, more. Yeah. There's been four clubs in the, the country. Three of them are from Queensland, so that's yep. Magpies from Mackay, uh, Southwest Queensland Thunder, and Sunny Coast Fire all conceding over 100 goals, and then Clarence United from Tasmania. Yep. Um, probably the most interesting is which strongest, uh, most potent attacking teams in the country this year. So in terms of goals scored per game, um, and obviously some leagues play more games than others. Devonport City comes out on top from Tasmania. And only just, if you'd, if we'd done this three days ago, two days ago, Olympic FC were in front. But okay. given they only scored the one goal one last goal, yeah. night, their average is brought down enough to put them into second. So Tasma- uh, Devonport have scored about 3.4 goals on average per game this year. Um, Olympic FC in second, just behind them. And then running down the list, Gungahl and United, South Hobart, Olympia Warriors, Hobart Zebras, so another three Tasmanian sides. And then uh, the next four are all Queensland, Queensland as well. Strikers, Tasmania. Lions, Peninsula Power, Gold Coast. So Tasmania and Queensland seem to be the two most lopsided leagues. Yeah. Or well, the, the difference between the top sides and the bottom sides is the biggest. And then the last thing was goals conceded per game. Um, and this is almost the opposite of goals scored. It's a similar sort of leagues. Clarence United have copped about six and a half goals a game. That's crazy. <laughs> That's tough. Um, Riverina Rhinos from ACT are up there. The ones we just mentioned again from Queensland, I won't go over them again, but Riverside Olympic from Tasmania. South Adelaide Panthers have got nearly three goals a game this year. Uh, Valentine FC and Redlands from Queensland as well. So those are the the clubs probably who don't want to be on that list, but Mm. defences have uh, not been great this year. All right, moving on. We've got a few questions uh, from Instagram to finish off. Jacob's asked a bunch of questions. So where he's asked, where are you based? We're in Brizzy, uh, Jacob. Um, opinion on National Second Division. We've covered this a lot, but basically, and we've also, Jake's written this mammoth document uh, probably like two years ago now, right? Yeah, it'll be close but, to that. But we did a video on it last year, and it's on our, on our website, TPO Rankings. If you just go to the menu and go to the show tab, uh, three videos ago, maybe four by the time you check this, it's called the Pecking Order Vision, uh, the Future of Australian Football. It was only a year ago we, we did that, yeah, October last year. And that sort of runs through um, our thoughts on Second Division. A lot more as well, but we touch on, a, a, on the on the second division, but briefly, like we're all for it, for it. Um, but um, anything to add? We to need that? it. We need it for Australian yeah. football for yeah. a whole host of reasons. But we also, but a caveat is it must have promotion relegation. Yeah, it can't be another A league light. It can't be a closed league where somebody, whoever it is, picks the teams and then that's it for five years or, or yeah. more. It needs to be connected. It needs to be a a full football pyramid. Yep. Um, and that's connected to the A league and the MPLs below it or whatever sits below it. It needs to be in both directions. Yep. Um, who will win the MPL final series? Um, I mean, the obvious choices are always the Victorian and New South Wales sides, um, but not that it worked out that way last year. Uh, I'm going to go with Heidelberg just because Victoria always seems to do reasonably well. They're the second highest ranked club in the country outside the A-League, so I'll go Heidelberg. I'm going to go Campbelltown. Um, just two, because... Two years in a row, you reckon? Yeah, I reckon they'll do well. Um and we have got a question that we can't really answer, but could you simulate the rest of the FFA Cup using expected TBO results? So we, 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 we could can, answer but it. <laughs> we haven't because we were a bit rushed today, so sorry about that. But, but, I mean, the obvious answer is whoever's ranked the highest on TBO rankings will will win um, yep. unless it was very close and they played an away game than the other team. But so I think so Adelaide at is the highest. At the moment, the highest. Adelaide United ranked the highest. So um, they would end up winning. Now we could do a game by game and show you how it would all pan out. But basically, it's whoever's ranked higher will, go, will generally... And, and to be honest, I might still answer this question outside of this video. Yep. Um, but 
long, uh, just, just to break down kind of percentages um, or probabilities in terms of how how many Each times game. out of a thousand simulations mm. Adelaide wins, for oh, yeah. instance. So Adelaide will be the favourites, um, but yeah, it'd be inter- interesting to see kind of where it sits because obviously there's still the the way the draw works at the next stage, um, at the semi final stage. Likelihood is that there's one club from outside the A League, um, but if Hume can do something to get through to the semi final as well, then yeah. the way the draw works at the semi final stage is a bit different again. So okay. you'd have to factor that in. Yeah, no, I'm interested to see. We're planning to get along to in Wednesday this week. Strikers are playing Moreland Zebras at home, so they've had a good run, haven't they? Playing at home, they're one of the. I mean, I'm as you say, they missed out on the finals, um, but. Watching their last couple of FFA Cup games, geez, they've impressed me. Yeah, they're playing some good footy, and I think they've come good second half of the year. They had a really poor start of the season, um, and that really affected them, but they've seemed to be picking up over the second half of the year. Now, Jake, that's pretty much the show. Um, guys at home, if you've got any questions, always we're, we're available. We're really going hard on uh, Instagram, so that's probably a good place. But anyway, really. Um, so can, can I add one more, Cody? No, I, sorry. No, I'm going to do it anyway, because on my stats of interest, I forgot to mention one. We talked about this the most potent attack in the country, mm-hmm. the stingiest defence in the country. Stingiest so defence. The, the least goals conceded oh, see. per yeah, game. Because yeah. um, this one's a little bit different. Lions FC has actually come out on top in Queensland. They've only conceded 0.8 goals per game across FFA Cup and the league. Yep. Wollongong, and, and this won't surprise anybody, the teams at the top of this are the teams that were winning trophies. So yeah, Lions, Premiership, Wollongong Wolves, Premiership in New South Wales, Gold Coast Knights, second on the league, won the grand final. Devonport City from Tasmania, Premiers. Avondale were second and then just missed out on the grand final. Edgeworth Eagles won a grand final. Um, Perth, Lemon and Jaffers are in there. Perth Soccer Club just below them won the grand final, well, you know, did the double. Um, Oakley Cannons, Arpia. So, the, I mean, this probably more than anything else mm. is most correlated to the, the trophies almost. So, yeah. it's, you know, the strongest defences in the country are the ones that were winning trophies. Yeah, that is interesting. Can we get that up on social media? We, you know what? Yeah. We'll put it up on social media. Cool. All right. Um, so thanks for watching. Thanks for listening if you've stuck through this far. Now, going forward, we are obviously MPL is pretty much done. We'll, we'll continue to follow the FFA Cup and their championship and that sort of stuff. Um, but as I mentioned, I'm heavy, heavy um, on A-League Fantasy this year. As a bit of a preview, um, we haven't watched really any A-League for about four to five years. Like last year, I think we caught a game and a half, two games maybe um, on TV, like total on TV. And in, we did go to one game. I had Here's the thing. I had three free tickets and I only used one of them. I just, you know, we used to go to Raw games, used to love it. Um, but yeah, last few years, it's just gotten boring, stale. But I think this year is really exciting with a new team, Wanderers back in their stadium, another team in the, in the following year. And I'm like, what gets me interested in football in A-League? It's having a stake in the game. And I'm not, not never really been into betting, but I think fantasy A-League is a way to go. Jake's not really sold on it, but I'm going to get him sold through I'm my gonna, I'm going to do it. And my podcast. I'm just not. Yeah. So I'm using this podcast, this platform, the, uh, social media to get into A-League uh, Fantasy and the, I think the website uh, Sports Deck, it's called, also have tipping and stuff like that. So I'm going to go hard on that as uh, I'm planning to do a weekly podcast. So if you're interested in that and I'm also on Twitter. Um, so yeah, follow that along if, you, if you're keen. I'll put up heaps of details as soon as it's open in the coming weeks um, and join the league, all that sort of stuff. Otherwise, Jake, anything to add before we, we say goodbye? Um, only that if you do have any requests for additions to the, the rankings, so other leagues you'd like us to cover, we do it during the off-season, so now's the time to ask them. Cool. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks, Jake. Appreciate it, Cody. Bye-bye.